Now some of the equipment is used in the construction company, some of it's used in the lawn care company, and some of it is just mine. Now this skid loader right here is used mostly, it stays right here at my house, and it's used to unload uh, pallets, unload deliveries, and for me to practice doing uh, wheelies on. So today guys, we're gonna take a tour of a lion's share of my equipment, but we're not going to get to all of it because I actually have it spread so far out and so far between that it's almost impossible for me to get to all of it at once. But this Bobcat 185 happens to be one of my favorite pieces of equipment that I own, that I still personally own. There right, you guys. I've never tried this before. It's winter time and part of wheeling. A skid loader means you got enough traction to stop and control what you're doing. I can't even get my bucket on because it's the forks are froze onto the machine and I figure let's just grab a big boulder and see what happens. Yeah it was pretty cold the day I was filming this and everything was just froze. In fact the dirt that's dirt froze on the bottom of that boulder. I was surprised I was able to get that boulder out of the ground actually because I couldn't get my forks off. I mean, they like, literally were froze to the machine. can't get any bite on the snow you know to, to keep it on them two wheels I don't know I say let's just keep on with the tour all right guys let's go through this equipment tour real fast over there we've got an arctic sectional pusher that's a 10 footer actually that's an eight footer in that corner uh they're really nice for doing detail work touch-up work this is our lawn care trailer bucket jeep i do use the jeep for work so this is one of our two main hardscaping trucks it does have a snow power on the back and a western mvp on the th front uh one thing i will say is i do like the western plows hate their cutting edges i think i've gone on record as saying that so here we have the plows that go on that truck over there the regular cab four it's a short iron on the back western mvp on the front here's an interesting story about this john deere 310 last snowfall actually the december 23rd snowfall it totally shredded the belt so then the main serpentine belt that's in there came off nobody knew about it for an hour and a half the only way they knew that this thing didn't have a belt is it didn't generate any heat it kept running it didn't throw a bearing on the engine it didn't have any problems at all except there was no heat in the cab and that was the main belt that ran everything so when they say nothing runs like a deer well i guess you know what they mean Here's the black hole. The black hole has a chronic bad front tire and has been rhino lined, actually not rhino lined, but painted in that black uh, rust proofing compound. And man, does that stuff actually work. This thing was a rust bucket. Still not very pretty, but the black hole is the black hole. It's, uh, we use it as backup. Whenever we need a machine, we throw some air in that tire and we're good to go. Here's the new ASV RT75. A lot of people have asked me about these, my, you know, what do you do? Well, how do you get so many different ASVs? Well, I do lease them. And so then I have, as part of my lease agreement, the ability to change one or two machines per year and try something else out. This has got that Max Series cab. Two things with this. Cab is phenomenal. 
The second thing is the machine does require some warm-up time. Unlike the other ASVs, I don't know if it's this particular model, I haven't talked to Buck at ASV, but this one, you gotta let her warm up for 10, 15 minutes before she'll start operating at full speed. That's only when it's super cold out. The kitty cat got the new, uh, well not new, but got my snow tracks on it. It came with dirt tracks. Came from Mississippi, sight unseen. Wouldn't even start. It was DOA when I got it. We got her running and this kitty cat it purrs beautifully. One of my favorite things is on the front of the kitty cat and that's Booger. Lucas and I from Arctic Sectional found this old pusher buried in the weeds and we completely rebuilt it using stock material. Nothing out of the ordinary was done. New pucks were put on it. New bolts were put in it. That's it. It's got everything else is original. So that means that pushers somewhere in the in the age of 20 to 30 plus years old. And here's a here's a comparison for for a brand new one. So they don't die when you take care of them. Here's our Rhino Line skid loader. We Rhino Line this thing three, four, five years ago. Something maybe you guys would know more. Um, other than knocking the Rhino lining off from the bottom. The rhino lining has been working phenomenal. You can see where we scraped it up, but the oil and grease doesn't hurt it, doesn't cake onto it, doesn't destroy anything. Here we got, this is an Arctic pusher. This is a black one. So this is really like all the other pushers that you can find out there, nothing special about it. The Arctics tend to scrape a lot better than anything else. Time out. That is not a sectional pusher. That pusher is like all of the other non-sectional pushers out there. Back to the program. The sectional ones, the yellow ones. Um, here's a Protec Fusion Edge pusher, another good pusher. It's just the guys prefer the Arctic because of the sight lines. Same plows, but take a look at the sight line difference. You see how much lower the Arctic is? It gives you that much better visibility. This Fusion Edge Pusher has sectional mall boards in it. Gotta stop the video here because it doesn't have sectional mall boards. It has a sectional edge. So the mall board stays stationary and just this little flippity floppity edge is what moves back and forth. On the Arctics, the entire mall board goes up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five sectional mall boards but they go back and forth like this. This one has one, two, three, four sectional mole boards, but they raise and lower. And what this does gives you a better scrape. It just gives you the ability to contour even more to the ground. This one's been actually a game changer. The sledge has been one of those tools. We got it equipped with what a 15 or 17 foot pusher. I kind of forget. What's on it? It's a 74 horsepower machine, $64,000 brand new in the box. You can't pay, you can't buy a skid loader for that much money brand new in the box. I can get a lot more money for the sledge per hour snow plowing than I can for a skid loader. Um, and it doesn't cost me anything more to own. It's not like it's a $200,000 machine. And the sight lines visibility on this are phenomenal. Let's see if we can take this for a spin. All right, the thing about the sledge that makes it so cheap is there's nothing electronic really about it. Everything is mechanical or old school. Take your shifter, for instance. Right here, we're in first gear. I let up, go into second gear. That's all we got for speed. She's still cold right now, guys. Um, we got forward. We've got reverse, and that's about all the things we've got on this machine. There's no electronic comfort creature comforts, no bells, no whistles. It's just made for snow plowing, and uh, that's what it's good at. So let's go look for some snow we can. Boy, she's cold blooded this morning. The thing I like about these Arctic sectionals. You can hit just about anything you want at any speed. And the mole board, if you look down there, you'll see the mole board will flip up. This thing is so maneuverable. This sledge, so much visibility. If you 
look around right now, I kind of feel like I'm a king of the castle, man. God, I love the visibility of these things. You can see everything. You can look down in people's cars and see what they're doing when they're sitting there. I'm not saying that's what I do. Yes, I do. I get bored. It's not like it's a speedy, high-production machine. You guys, look at that, how much snow I can move at once. It's it's just not meant, like you're loading trucks, or you gotta do something day in and day out, you're not gonna like it. You'll be like, what's the dirt monkey talking about? But if you just need something that's gonna go out and plow snow, or work on the farm, and not cost you an arm and a leg, this thing's a no-brainer. One of the questions I do want to answer is why do you keep some stuff, you know, outside of the construction company and landscaping company? And there's a reason why I do it because a lot of the, sometimes the work that I do doesn't relate to the hardscaping, the landscaping, doesn't relate to our main line of work. And that's what you're going to see today. In fact, to, to take, to, to continue on with this tour, we've got to go a hundred miles up north. But before that, we've got work to do and it has nothing to do with landscaping, hardscaping or anything you guys typically see on my channel so you're gonna actually see some of the work we do that you don't you normally get to see so let's do that now Frankie and I have a pretty big project going up at my cabin the if this this is the front of my cabin it used to have a roof that was just this long sloping roof and the snow would just sit on top of it and it was just gonna destroy the cabin if we had a really snowy winter Frankie and I were up there shoveling it off so instead what we've done is we've created a peak on top of that roof but to do it we had to build a roof over the roof and it was it's a lot more work than it sounds like so basically we're adding an entire second story and altering the roof line on the cabin and when I do that I don't like to use GT or our hardscaping equipment because that's needed to make us a living. So I have a, a, my whole line of equipment that I use that I reserve for myself. The orange trailer, that's my trailer. I will let GT, I'll let the company use it, but if I need it first and foremost, then I get to use it. I have a couple, two, three skid loaders, two skid loaders, a Bobcat T180, which is buried way out in the woods right now because uh, Frankie and I were working on a project out in the woods and I didn't bother to bring it back in. I've got this truck, this trailer. I've got my, my Ram pickup truck with my snow buyer, snow dog plow and my snow power plow. That's my own personal truck as well. So I have just enough equipment that I can keep operating without taking anything away from the business. Kind of long story that wasn't short. And this is us playing with the new GoPro 360 camera, which not 100% sure I'm sold on it yet. So when you guys see that camera kind of rotating around, that's that 360 camera. You guys tell me what you think of it, if it's cool or not. Let's, let's go into my yard. This is not the way in. Oh, gee, many ominous. But it works, right? This is the way in when you forget your key. Okay, so let's take a look at, you guys want old equipment? There you go. This actually is a decent packer, but we pulled it apart, started rebuilding it. Never finished it. Stone Rhino, I think it's a 1977 packer. I'm hoping my shed is open. Let's go find out, and we'll take a look at the excavators over there. All right guys, so this is where we keep all of our lawn care equipment. This is the Gravely 60 inch zero turn. That's the, technically the pro turn 460. The hydros on this thing, smooth as silk. Now this one is a right mower. This is a 72 inch mower and it's running dual tweels. This was an experimental mower that Ed Wright put together and uh, I've been running and it's an experiment that's absolutely been a home run hands down such a beautiful piece of equipment here's the x mark 48 inch more i don't know why but this thing goes out probably as much as anything else i own it's got a lot of hours on it for a small 48 inch mower the guys just love this thing 
Here we've got a Toro grandstand, one of the originals that we bought when we first started. And then we've got the Toro 61 inch, which we bought when we first started as well. This is basically just for uh, leaf cleanup. The detacher unit goes on the front. We've got the Hurricane leaf blower over here. That thing is a $12,000 leaf blower. And yes, it's worth, it's worth every penny of it. If you do a lot of leaf cleanups, it's worth every penny of it. If you don't, you're still gonna love it, but it's not gonna be worth $12,000. Here we've got the brand new Toro. I think this one is a 60 inch, yep. 60 inch Titan Max mower. This is actually a residential mower with ROPS, which you don't see very often. And it runs a Kohler power plant, which you won't see in any of my stuff very often, except this one is a good one. This is the Kohler 7000 series. I'm actually okay with that Kohler motor. Not seeing any others, just that one. Here's a couple of our packers. Uh, this one probably came from Northern Hydraulics. This one came from a company called Tomahawk. And in the back, you're gonna see one of our first snow plows. This was actually designed to go on our dump truck. It's got a really aggressive moldboard design. We converted it to go over to a skid loader after we quit plowing with the dump truck. Story time with Stan. I gotta tell you guys a cool story. You, you won't believe it. And if you guys got a so story that this triggers, put it down below, will ya? So, got a, my uh, Peterbilt dump truck driver. This was five, six years ago. I was down in the yard, just hanging out down here. Pulled his tr truck in, getting ready. No, it was morning time. He pulled in, he was getting his dump truck warmed up, ready to go. A guy pulls in, drives right into our yard and parks. Now, we rent this yard. We don't own any of this property down here. We rent it from a company over there and they had an old bulldozer sitting down, right down about where the Bobcat is right now, right? And the guy pulls up, pulls next to it. And, my guy's in the Peterbilt and they start talking and they're just chit-chatting. My guy hops in the Peterbilt, comes out to work during the day, comes back that evening, parks the truck, and I get a phone call from the people I rent from. Hey, what happened to our bulldozer? And I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? I'm like, you know, that old bulldozer that's sitting down in the corner, what happened to it? And so I asked my truck driver and he's like, well, you know what? The weirdest thing is there was a guy came down there and, and I thought he worked for the, the people we rent from, he was just sitting there talking to me for the longest time. He had a truck, he had a trailer. He must have loaded that thing up after I left and stole it. And that's what he did. He literally came in, talked to us, sat there, waited for my driver to leave, and then stole the bulldozer. Not, I can't make stories like that up. God, that is just, wow. That's wow. Story time with Stan, right? Let's keep on going with the tour. All right, so let's go take a look at some of the excavators now. And some of our, I call this the junkyard, the scrap yard, right? All of it costs money at some point, that's the problem. This hammer, that cost me seven grand. Does it look like it's $7,000 sitting there? Nope. Here's a totem grapple. That, was a, that one was, I don't even wanna tell you how much it was. It came on that machine. So this is the grapple. That was came that was on that one and it worked just cruddy. I mean it was just terrible. I bought the machine for the grapple and it was a horrible experience. So then we switched over to a CMP. I never looked back. I still don't like the machine. This is our Daewoo. The reason I don't like the machine is I don't feel that it delivers enough power to the tracks. What is this? A solar 75? I don't think they make this thing anymore. That's alright, because I wouldn't buy it again if they did make it, so uh, it's just an average piece of equipment. Nothing good, nothing bad. It's not bad, it's just average. These I like, the Cabalco 160 series. This weight category, beautiful ba balance of power to the hydraulics, power to the tracks, weight of the machine. We used to have five of these. Now we're down to one and we still don't use it. We had five when we were doing commercial, all commercial work. Now we don't do any commercial work and it's just a little bit too big to squeeze into a residential site. So it sits there getting, making mouse nests in it. You guys remember my Bobcat, right? And here we've got a whacker. 
and another Wacker. Here's the Wacker Packer series. Uh, that one was 20 grand. Does that look like it's worth 20,000 bucks? No, that's what they cost. I can't believe the price of equipment. I think this one was 10 grand. Uh, you know, how do you make a living in construction when everything costs so much? Here's a brand new power rake. I'm gonna be putting that one to the test. This We've got a rock bucket. I'll probably be in here uh, sometime soon grabbing that. And then we've got our slats, our stacks of slat tracks. Say that fast five times, right? Stacks of slat tracks. And this is basically for building roads. We lay them out, we build them. We've got old buckets, more old buckets. Here's a rock bucket. This is a stumper. I think it's called stump. Rock brush grapple. I don't know. Stout. It's called stout. I was close, you guys. I was close. Hydra bucket by CMP. Same people that make my grapple make this. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Here's some over the tire tracks. Not good. I mean, they're just in general over the tire tracks like that, those steel tracks right there, they're just not good unless you've got a machine that you don't care about. I got to pause it there. Let me just define exactly what I mean. As those tracks go over your tires and you're turning and you're getting into mud, if you don't keep those tracks absolutely to the right tension, which it's easy to allow them to kind of get out of tension, those tracks will move on your machine and they'll catch on the frame of your machine. They'll catch on a bucket. They'll catch on a rock. They'll fling stuff up. And I've had more gouges in the frames of my machines and more times that I've been driving along and had a track catch and go than I have with over the tire rubber tracks. So I'm not a big fan of the over the tire steel tracks. Back to the program. Cause it'll tear it up. The beak, this one was a big surprise. Thought that was gonna be a joke. That thing is amazing. Absolutely amazing. We've got forks and we've got whatever junk we've got laying around out there. Now let's take a look at some of the big rigs or the most dangerous equipment that I own. Those two pieces of equipment right there. I think dump trucks are the absolute most dangerous thing on any job site. I'll tell you why in a minute. All right, so let's check, check this out. I have two dump trailers. You seen the other one earlier. This is the sure track. This one is a smaller dump trailer. It's lighter, but it can haul more. And we spec'd it out like this so that when we're hauling dirt, debris, heavy stuff, we grab this one. Technically, the orange trailer can actually handle more. It's got heavier duty axles, a lot of heavier duty components than that one, but the trailer itself is just so heavy that you can't put as much legal weight on it as you can with this one. So this one is designed legally to haul more. The other trailer is designed to technically handle more capacity. Here's something that shouldn't cost a lot of money, but sure as heck does. Just these tri-axle quad trailers to haul you know, we hauled our big excavator, we hauled our dozer. And um, it's not a, not a great design. This one is like 30 something years old and it flipped going down the road with not that excavator, but it's twin on it. That excavator, let's just pretend it was that one. And that one, we're all combined together upside down on the highway. That wasn't fun, and I seen the whole thing happen right in front of my eyes. I was not driving. I was the, uh, I was the scout vehicle. <laughs> Horrible. 1988 Freightliner. Now I'm going to tell you a story about the 1988 Freightliner, or the Freightliner people in general. There's a Freightliner company that was in Invergrove Heights, Minnesota. Can't remember the name of them. They, uh, my dad, he was a little bigger guy, not big, but you know, 210, 220 pounds and about my size. He had a little bit of a big belly on him. And this has got an Eaton auto shift transmission in it, which is kind of like the same transmissions that they use on buses. All right, let's stop this because then I get off track on the Eaton auto shift transmission, but we were having difficulty with the Eaton auto shift transmission. The clutch on it was so stiff that you had to literally get it right down to the floor. And it almost, it literally was, it was tough on your leg. You, it wore you out. And although the transmission itself does all of the shifting for you, it just 
getting that clutch to fully disengage and engage. And we brought it in, we bought that truck brand new, we brought it back to him time and time again, hey, can you get this adjusted? Can you get this set up right? And finally, at one point, the managers, the owners of the, the business, they came to us and they said to my dad, well, maybe if you didn't have such a big belly, you wouldn't have such a hard time with the transmission. I wish I could have punched that guy right in the back of his skull. And it was Freightliner and Invergrove Heights. That's a company that I'm not going to uh, hide. That, that torqued me enough that I would never buy another Freightliner again, and I would never get this transmission again. But let me tell you a little bit more about this transmission and get back into this story. Right? You push the clutch in, you put the truck in drive, you let the clutch out, and the truck does the rest of the shifting for you. We bought it like this because I figured, yeah, it's locked just like I thought. I figured if I was gonna get drivers in it, I wanted something that didn't require skills. So here we go. I don't know if you guys can see it, to shift. When I say I think dump trucks are the most dangerous thing on the road, I think it's because of the pool of drivers that we business owners have to uh, pull from. There's not a lot of really good drivers out there. We've got a good driver. He's not, uh, he may not be the best at showing up on time sometimes, but he's got skills that pay the bills. That's why we keep him around. And then we got the Peterbilt. We got the pig. And the Peterbilt, we retired her. There's nothing wrong with it. We just don't have, we used to keep both trucks running full time. We switched gears, didn't need to keep both trucks running, so we re retired her. I'm going to build her into something really, really cool. I always like this truck. This is a great truck. I don't know if it's open or not. Do you guys see the name on this, the sign on the side of the truck? That's the fish or the, 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 the Christian fish symbol. And that's the American flag inside of it. And so to me, that, that sign represents everything that I believe in. God first, country second, and then I use my family name, genetic, third. So I put them in that order. And the cool, little cool side story about the Christian fish symbol is way back in the day when Christians were being persecuted, they, two Christians would stand in front of each other. And as they were talking, one of them would draw just make an arc in the sand with his foot. He wouldn't make the fish. And the other Christian, if they, if he was a Christian on the other side of it, would put his foot and finish the ark. And that was the secret sign that they were Christians. I just thought that was so cool. All right, let's keep looking at equipment. Nothing wrong with it. It's got a 13 speed transmission. Yep. Lights still come on. If I had key, smells like mice. Smells like a dead mouse in here. Love this 13 speed transmission. This is the kind of transmission I'm used to driving. Uh, I love this. I've had what, five or six different dump trucks and the 13 speed Eaton Auto Fuller transmission's always been my favorite. These long nose trucks are my favorite too. They may not be able to get around as easy as a short nose truck or a cab over or whatever, but I, I gotta pause it. I gotta tell you this story, but the most miserable dump truck that I ever owned was a rebuilt 1968 Mac with, with a, it was a dual stick transmission. So instead of having one stick, you had two separate steer, uh, stick shifts that you had to handle. One stick shift had four gears and the other stick shift had five gears. And you had a combined total of 20 gears in that truck. So you had to know exactly where, where each stick was. As you, I mean, you want to know how to, to drive a dump truck really fast? If you could be proficient in that dump truck, you could drive anything. It was a miserable hog. And I called it the green machine and I was so glad when that thing was finally gone. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. It just feels good to drive one. It's like he's driving around going, look how cool I am, look how cool I am. And that's our video for today. Hope you guys had fun. You guys wanted an equipment tour? I gave you one. I hope it was slightly interesting. I didn't know how to do an equipment tour that was interesting. So did the best I could. This is the last equipment, first and last that I ever plan on doing. So. That's all we got for you besides this 
leaving you with one of my nasty old trailers. I gave this one to Frankie. Nothing wrong with it. I just don't need it. I got plenty of them sitting around in the weeds. I got to close up and hit the road. That's what we got for you today. God bless. Let's go get them. See you on another one, you guys. Some of the equipment that I didn't get out to, to show you guys was the 1979 John Deere track excavator. That's one of the, the, the first pieces. It was actually the first piece of equipment that I, we ever technically bought for our business. We've also got, I think it's a Massey Ferguson uh, tractor. I still own that today. That's one of the first pieces of equipment that I ever learned how to drive on. Um, and, and there's a few other pieces here and there. The, the quad mini loader or quad worky we got the worky quad we've also got the cast mini loader uh and some other few pieces here and there which you guys probably know you're like hey why didn't i see this and why didn't i see that the uh the two pickup trucks the two fords some of you guys may want to know what year those are those are i think 2014s uh we bought them both in the same year both of our ram trucks are 2019s Bought them both in the same year. Some exciting stuff is happening. You guys are going to see some changes coming up in the future on the board behind me. CMP Attachments is in, you guys. So they're going to be giving you guys 10% off everything on their website. I can't wait. They're sending me a sign. As soon as that sign goes up, man, 10% oh, off a Hydra bucket? That's like 500 bucks off. 10% off a of grapple, that's going to save you guys $1,400. But you got to you order it online. Cujo Shoes is also on board. Who else is on board? Corey Ballard Innovations. Everything at Ballard Innovations, 10% off as well. And he's sending me a sign. So you guys are going to see that wall filled out. And eventually, I'm going to get a banner from LMN or I'm going to make my own. I don't like that out my I don't like that invisible LMN banner. So if they don't send me a better one than that, I'm gonna make a cooler one myself. And that's our video for today. Let me know what you think of the equipment tour you guys asked for. I was never gonna do this. I didn't think it was entered. Why would you want to just go look at somebody else's old equipment? I don't know. Hopefully you did. See you on another one, you guys. Catch you later.